what am I doing there? Today on Exploring Limitations, we are going to teach you how to get more tracks out of four tracks with the stereo bouncing technique. Here we go. <laughs> Some of you who have been following my channel may recall one of my earlier videos called How It's Made Part 1. And in that video, I explained that on this TIAC machine that you can only get up to about 10 tracks from this internal bouncing or ping-ponging as the old school cats like to call it. There are only four tracks available on the tape cassette itself. Luckily on this machine, you can consolidate tracks. You can record multiple, uh, you know, instruments on different tracks or ideas and then what we call bounce them to another one. And guess what? It was a little bit of a lie, a lie, not a total lie. If you only had this machine and no, nothing else, no computer and no other external tape machine, then that what I said was true. You just can only bounce back and forth and without going into gazillions of generations, you can only get 10 tracks with four tracks. Uh, and I'm not gonna bother explaining how to do that right now because I already did it. The deeper down the four track rabbit hole you go, the more experienced older cats always say, hey, what about the stereo bouncing technique? And I remember the first time I heard it and it was explained and I'm like, oh well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So with this technique, you need your four track machine, but you also need either an external stereo tape machine like I'm fortunate enough to have the TIAC A2340 or like if you're like most people uh, a computer with a two channel interface would work just as fine. There are some lo-fi and analog snobs out there who will insist that the analog to digital converters are just not good enough. Mm, yeah. But you know here we're talking about exploring limitations and if that's all you got then that's all you got. Uh, no, no judgment here. As Andrew Sheps has said on many occasions, it's all about what comes out of the speakers at the end of the day. Who cares? If you watched my video last week, I am in the middle of creating a new piece of music, and right now it's just the rhythm track. Uh, you, there's no melodic elements on it, there's no keyboards or anything like that. But I had created a track that had uh, drums on track one, and then a bass doubled with an octave higher guitar in track two, and then uh, two guitars panned hard. And obviously that's just the rhythm track. So I wanted to uh, get it bounced back down, but I liked the stereo spread. That's the whole point of this technique, is that you can preserve the stereo image of whatever you have on your four track and, and bring it back into your four track. So what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, when you've when you're ready to export uh, or bounce your mix of your in this case my rhythm section track I just do what I normally do in a final mix I, I take my stereo output of the Tascam machine and I plug it into uh, the reel to reel and then I mix the song as if it has no melody and then that leaves us with the two, the, the two tracks, stereo track. And then I can, once I've recorded that, I can bring it back in onto two tracks onto the cassette. It's really that simple. And then that frees up your track one and track two for uh, overdubs. And then if you're really crazy, once you've done that, added tracks one and two on top of your imported uh, three and four stereo track, you can do that whole thing again. So in theory, you can keep bouncing these stereo images. Uh, obviously with tape, you, can, you can't go too many generations without really hearing the degradation, but you could do it a couple times and it'll work. I'm not gonna play the whole song, but right here, I'm going to show you a snippet of me uh, mixing the four tracks down to the reel to reel.
Okay, that was cool. Now, what we do is we go from the reel to reel onto a new cassette. I don't overwrite to the old part. Uh, you can, and I've done things like that. But in this case, I just want to make sure I have the backup of the old rhythm track in case I fudge it up. So here we go, bouncing to a cassette. I have a stereo file of what I had mixed along with compression. And so I'm just going to play back that track uh, onto here, onto tracks three and four. And so as I look, I realize that everything's all panned weird and blah, 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 blah. So I like to zero the board first. Got no effects going on, turn all that off. This is standard operating procedure. Uh, should be for mixing. Channels one and two are off. Uh, we're setting channels three and four to input, and we should set them at the optimal um, uh, optimal recording setting. Uh, let's flatten this EQ. I'll probably brighten it up. Uh, set these to zero. Set these to zero. I'll probably brighten it up. Uh, we're running in at line level, so we probably don't need any trim any gain, uh, but we'll see. And then I'll, I'll get right back to you. So that's this is my starting point for bouncing the stereo tracks. Let's make sure we pan this and I've got it set to re remix. And we've got direct tracks three and four are armed. And then we'll uh, play, play some of this back and see what it sounds like. All right. Well, uh, back to you, other made on tape man. It's that simple. And like I said before, you can repeat this process and layer it. So you can keep bouncing stereo images to, to your computer, your DAW, or uh, an external stereo tape machine and reprinting them back into the cassette. So you can keep adding and preserving your stereo image as you see fit. This requires a little bit of forethought and a little bit of planning, but uh, just go out there and experiment. This is all about experimentation. It's all about exploring our limitations that we have. And with that, as always, peace and be good to each other. I think I need some B-roll.